Welcome back R2 Builders. This is part two in our series for the hollow projectors. Uh, in our last episode we made the hollow projector cap. In this episode we're going to make the cowl and the inner ball and we're going to figure out a way to mount them. In order to do that you're going to need these. They're clear little round spheres that you can get at craft stores in the ornament making section. And you're going to need one of these. I can only find this at Home Depot. It's got two different widths to it. One is uh, I believe it's an uh, inch and a half and the other it's a little bit rounder, it's going on the inside. So we're going to need one of those. Those are the only parts you're going to need. As for materials, you're going to need your plastic cement as usual. You're going to need a 1 and 5 8 inch hole saw. At least this is how I built mine. You're going to need a half inch hole saw. You're going to need one of these which comes with the hole saw. And at least the hole saw kit that will go inside of here. I've got a small little bit right here. This is a uh, three quarters. You don't really need this hole saw, but I use it. It helps me out. Of course, you're going to need a drill. I'll be using a drill press for mine. Going to need a hacksaw to cut the plastic with. Got some tape to mark the plastic with, and as well for cutting, it helps so it doesn't crack anything. Going to need some vice grips. Of course, you're going to need a ruler that also measures in 30 seconds. That's going to come in handy as well. Some of these, just for you know, plotting points going side to side like that, that's going to help when it measures the holes for the cowl, which is this. That way we can cut through that. And then I made two of these, one's bigger than the other. This is so we can use this when we go to cut our round spheres out of. That's it. We're going to get this thing cut and we're going to get it mounted so it looks just like this. We begin by drilling the 2 and 3 8 inch sphere with the 1 and 5 pip inch hole saw directly on top. Use some WD-40 to squirt it down as you drill and it'll leave a nice hole like this. We want to make this end fit into that. Even though it's the same size, it doesn't exactly fit. So we just need to sand it down. We're going to take this, wrap some sandpaper around here like this. Go through the bottom and just keep sanding until this fits perfectly. Remember the thickness of this, so let's take this off and see how our fit is. You don't need to force this on here at all. If you do, it's not right. So you see that fits perfectly, and that's exactly how we want it. So the sanding part is done. We now use our Dremel to sand off this little eyelet hole here. Once that's sanded off, just make sure all the little burrs are off completely. We're now going to wrap tape around our pipe. We are wrapping the tape just above the larger portion on the bevel. We are going to cut that completely off and save this small piece as you can see right here. This is the larger section of the pipe which is 1 and 5 eighths inch in diameter on the outside and we're going to use this piece later. After we get that cut we're going to test the fit here on our hollow cap because we want to see how that cap looks on the inside. We're then going to sand cut with our hacksaw about one thirty-second of an inch down from the bevel on the perfectly round section of the inch and a half diameter pipe. Once that's cut off, we're going to take this beveled portion and we're going to make sure all the burrs are off of that. We're then going to put it inside this cap. We're going to glue that down because that's where we want it because that's going to hold our chabacon in place. And then we're going to take this large piece of the inch and five eighths pipe and put that around there so that houses the chabacan and that'll also go around our hole that we drilled for the inner ball. So here we have the plastic cement. We're putting a bead of plastic cement around the lip here that we created in this cone and we're going to take this large diameter section of the bevel that we cut out from that pipe and just glue that inside of there. You may want to put a little bondo filler on the inside. We're going to take that inch and five eighths diameter cap, glue that to the bevel portion on that smaller section that we created. It fits perfectly around that cap. After we do that, we're going to apply some putty around the inside of that, smooth it out with our finger, that also creates a bevel and this is where our inner plastic ball will sit and you see the bevel right here that we created with the um, putty. I'm finding the center the best I can on the top of this sphere so it's right in the middle. I'm going to take our friction dividers after I etch a circle and make four points in all four quadrants all north, south, east, and west. After I do that, I'm going to make sure those are aligned by spreading our friction dividers here at 
five, or I'm sorry, 23 64 and I make X's with them on all the quadrants and they should all line up. Once I do that, we're going to take a drill bit, a really small drill bit, and we're just going to slowly etch a small little circle into those. That way we can have starter points for our drill. I've got my small drill bit. I'm making small little pilot holes right here on the X's that you can see. One of the X's is right there, right where that drill bit is. We're going to go around all four corners. Once we do this, we're going to increase the size of our bits, going bigger and bigger each time. This is the same principle that we used when we created the light bezels for our front logic display and our rear logic display. So here's a bigger drill bit and I just slowly work that with my fingers going around and around. Once we have that, we're going to use a drill and drill those all the way down through. And just be careful, you don't want to crack this, go slow with it, make sure it's secured real good. You may want to put some tape on the inside because that will prevent it from cracking. Go slow, I'll join with the quarter inch bit because you don't want to crack this plastic. Too fast it can crack it, too slow it can crack it. So maybe put some tape on the inside of there. I've done a bunch of these so I know how to do it by now. Here's the quarter inch and a half hole saw. Go in each hole, slowly going around and you'll slowly see this drill bit punching through. Once it finally punches through, you can take that piece of plastic and you're left with four nice quadrants that have been drilled out. Be careful, don't hurt your hand on this. That's why I hold it on the bottom. Here you can see that cone goes through there. We're going to sand out two spots on each side and make them perfectly flat. That's how the real cones look like for R2. Uh, we're going to take our sanding Dremel here and go around the inside and make sure those are perfectly perpendicular. We have our sandpaper and this is just going to get off all the little burrs all the way around that. Here we've got our aluminum paint that we're applying. You may want to paint the ball and the cowl at the same time if you're making static hollow projectors that don't move. Metalizer aluminum works really well for this as well as the sealer. If these are static, just like I said, glue them together. We can buff these out in just a second once they're painted and dry only takes 10 minutes. Here you have a complete assembly without the cabochon. Right here you see what it looks like just before we're going to buff it out and as we are buffing it out right here. Once that's done you have a complete set of Polo projector lights and it matches the aluminum dome quite nicely. As always everybody, thanks for watching my videos. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, put some comments in there and some likes.